to the College Grad Reflections here on Game Boy TV. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about my experiences doing my senior recital, uh, which happened a couple months ago. Since there's a lot to talk about in this episode, I'm actually going to split it into two episodes. So this is episode 13, and then I'm going to speak more about it in episode 14. So let's get started here. Now, if you were in a music major in college, you'd be doing something that's called a senior thesis or a dissertation. It's that final major project that you have to complete before you graduate, and that's worth a lot, worth a huge grade. So us music majors have to do uh, something that's very similar to that, and it's called a senior recital. It bridges the gap between the end of your college life in music and the beginning of the rest of your performing part of your career. It's a culmination of all the solo repertoire that you've learned, and now it's time to present it in front of family and friends. It represents a maturation from a young naive adult to an adult that is ready to take on the challenges of the world. It's very personal and quite a historic accomplishment. I am so excited for this episode because my senior recital was quite unique and different than any other music major than what any other music major did in the past. So senior recitals are planned many months in advance because you need to be able to have your repertoire, the programs, the flyers, and the refreshments ready thereafter. You also need to secure the venue of choice, which is usually Enlo Hall or Kane Hall. And you can do that through working with the secretary. However, I always wanted my senior recital to be different. I had this whole, don't be afraid to be the first mentality. And I actually didn't want it on campus. Instead, I opted to go to my home parish for my senior recital. Not to sound like I'm bragging, but my church is big and spacious. It has wonderful acoustics. It has, a beautiful has beautiful stained glass windows as well as a well-tuned grand piano. And I also have strong ties to the parish as an occasional musician, usher, and volunteer decorator. So it would make sense to have it there. Now, in order to be approved of a senior recital, the first step is to do something called a special jury. A jury is a performance final for the semester. And music majors and theater majors know that very well. But in a special jury, I must play a portion of my program to show how much I've grown as a musician. And so Monday, December 5th, 2016 was the day of my special jury. And <laughs> when I got over with it, I started doing snow angels on the floor. <laughs> anyway, I got working quickly on putting my program together. For a senior recital, one must have pieces representing the different eras of classical music, from Baroque all the way through neoclassical contemporary. Each era of music presents itself with different kinds of challenges. It's like playing around with different colors and brush strokes in a painting. Um, and so I'm going to get to uh, that portion of the program. If I don't cover it in this episode, I'll uh, definitely cover it in episode 14. Because I plan on doing an off-campus recital, that puts more pressure on me to secure a venue myself. I first presented a straightforward plan to my music director of my for, um, the mu music director of my church uh, before Christmas in 2016. It included accommodations, the target date for the recital, and a tentative lineup of the entire uh, program. And she told me that it was fine and that she will convince the pastor. And so the day that was set was uh, Wednesday, April 19th, 2017 at 7.30. I actually initially wanted it on a weekend, um, but doing it on Sunday, the 16th, it was, was Easter Sunday. And the following Sunday, April 23rd, um, my mom would was would be going to the Philippines um, the night before, so we couldn't do it either on that Saturday or that Sunday. So that Wednesday had to have been uh, the date that I had to choose. Um, but for my poster, I took several photos around the Kane campus, and I used an online website called Canva, which you can sign up and get a 30-day free trial. So I played around with the filters, and... Um, 
And so here is my poster. Whoops, almost dropped it. Pretty neat, right? Um, you actually got to see my last name uh, on that uh, on that poster. Normally, I'd be, you know, normally uh, I would introduce myself as Mark Joseph. I'd just use my first name and my middle name, but I normally don't really like to use my last name here on YouTube. But that, anyway, that poster looks pretty neat, right? In fact, I actually made two posters, but I only printed out the best one. And thinking outside the box for the recital, I also had someone read information about each piece and composer. I will also get to that uh, later on in the, either in the ep this episode or the next episode. So here's the program. I'm going to zoom, just uh, show up close, right here. It was created, oh, sorry, before I get to that, I also want to show you what the inside looks like. You can also see papers uh, attached to it, and everybody got one of these, like the program and you know the packet, packet of papers as well. And it was uh, created with the help of a nun at my former high school. It has a neat front cover with the cane logo inside, and my entire program and acknowledgments, which also uh, cover the back portion of the uh, of the program. Then, in addition, I. You know, I, I typed up some rules about the classical, about a classical recital, like refraining from applauding between movements um, of a piece or until the end of a set of individual pieces. And there is also bios of the performers who had a role in the recital, as well as additional acknowledgements that I couldn't fit on the actual program. So here is the quick guide to the senior recital, use of electronic devices, I also wrote about that. A, biogra oops, a biography of all the performers here and credits assisting you know those who are assisting the senior recital as well as the additional acknowledgments so we fast forward to Tuesday April 18th um, and it was my dress rehearsal and my dress rehearsal was the final opportunity to iron out all the kinks it's the time where I get one last go at everything. And for, um, for my cellist, I actually had um, one of my friends, her name is Ari, who helped me uh, with this recital. Um, this is the first rehearsal at the church, so, you know, oh, that was interesting. You know, the two of us rehearsing in that big space. Um, and playing in a church, folks, is very different than playing in a practice room. So everything is acoustically different. Aesthetically, it's also different. So after, um, after my classical uh, pieces, um, I also decided to include an encore presentation. So in addition to the cellist, I asked two singers who were named Clarence and Caitlin to see if they can sing two musical theater pieces um, with me. And Clarence, he sang Bring Him Home from the musical Les Mis. And Caitlin sang the, sang the second piece called I'm Not Afraid of Anything uh, from Songs for a New World by Jason Robert Brown. And so at this dress rehearsal, we were trying to figure out if we needed a microphone or not. Um, so I don't want to ramble too much about this dress rehearsal. We're already about nine minutes into the video, but I just wanted to get the point across that you never stop working until the big moment. You know, so we had the dress rehearsal for two hours with me, the cellist, Ari, uh, Clarence and Caitlin, our two singers, um, Nina, who was going to read the information about my senior recital pieces. And my MC, yes, an MC for my senior recital, uh, Mrs. Williamson, who was my former high school religion teacher, and she would be doing the introductions. Um, my friend Edsel was also there, and his cousin Omar, uh, who would be doing uh, photography and video. And that was a nice crew um, at that recital, if I do say so myself. Okay, so um, please pay attention to the graphics because I'm going to explain the lineup for my senior recital. 
First, we start off with something very exciting. Frederick Kulau's Sonatina in C Major, Opus 55, Number 3, with two movements. The next two pieces are duet pieces with Ari. The first is called Sonata in E Minor, with four movements. Um, and, then, and then the second duet piece is Ave Maria, based on... Uh, box prelude number one in C major, although this uh, this version happened to be in a different key, G major. For the romantic portion of the program, I played three pieces from Peter Tchaikovsky's The Seasons, Opus 37. The month of March, which is titled Song of the Lark, October, which is titled The Autumn Song, and May, which is titled Starlit Nights. Then we head off into the late romantic slash impressionist era, by performing uh, The Little Shepherd from Claude Debussy's Children's Corner. Then I played Movement 1 of the Liszt Constellations before wrapping up this segment with a unique piece called Prelude for the Left Hand Alone by Russian composer Alexander Skriabin. The final segment of the piece was, with no doubt, the hardest of them all, Dmitry Shostakovich's Three Fantastic Dances. Movement 1 is like a mischievous march. The next movement is a waltz with unexpected interruptions that Shostakovich deliberately threw in, and the final movement is a polka that is unbelievably quick but difficult. Despite many pieces and movements, it was a quick program which timed out to about 45 minutes. And so you saw there on the graphic that I also had Roman numerals. Those numbers represented each segment of the program. So, you see, you don't expect me to play all those pieces at once, you know. Um, even a performer needs breaks in between. And breaks are the offer perfect opportunity to get some water, maybe get some deep breaths in, lower your heart rate a little bit, and get ready to perform the next section. And during these breaks is when Nina, our reader, comes to the podium and, you know, explains um, everything about the next piece. And so, I'm going to leave it there. This episode pretty much um, summarized the preparation um, that was done for me to perform this senior recital. And so, our next episode, episode 14, we'll talk about the actual performance itself and the aftermath. It's something that you do not want to miss. So, thanks for watching another episode of the College Grad Reflections here on Game Boy TV.